Hello and welcome back to Petrus Tech. Today we'll be setting up a small Kubernetes environment using Ubuntu and Micro K8S. Uh, we'll be using Micro K8S mainly because it's uh, and it pretty much includes everything you would need to set up a testing Kubernetes environment. I probably wouldn't recommend it for production, uh, but for development it is just fine. So uh, you can download Ubuntu server from ubuntu.com. If we go here to download uh, we can go to Ubuntu server and then we'll go over here to manual server installation and then we'll download uh, 20.04.3 LTS which is the latest LTS release at the time of this recording. Um, you could alternatively use the uh, most recent version of Ubuntu but it's not an LTS release so you'll lose support I believe it's six months after the next release comes out so um, probably stick with the, the LTS version for servers. I already have it downloaded though um, right here. I already have it downloaded on my Proxmox server, so we'll just go ahead and get started. So we're going to go ahead and here create a VM. Uh, 100, we'll name this Kubernetes Demo. Hit next. Change the ISO image to Ubuntu 20.04.3. Click next. We'll leave all this alone. Uh, we'll change disk size to 128 gigabytes. Uh, and we'll also do SSD emulation and discard, and then change this to a raw disk image. I found that these have better performance than QCOW. So hit next. We'll give it four sockets and four gigabytes of RAM. And we'll hit next for networking. We don't need to change anything there, and we can click finish. All right, so we'll go over here to 100. All right, and we'll click Start to go ahead and boot the machine. And then we'll also open up the console. We'll wait for it to get booted. It'll take a minute for it to boot up and uh, get running. All right, so we'll go ahead and start the setup here. So we'll pick English. We'll click done. Um, here uh, for the network setup, uh, we need to change this to a static IP. Kubernetes typically doesn't like uh, manual uh, DHCP or random IPs that you might get from your DHCP server. So we'll give it a static one. So here with some is 192.168. 42.0/24 and we'll give us an address of 192.168.42.20 and then the gateway and the DNS server is the same so we'll fill that in here all right and we'll hit save and then we'll hit done no proxy leave the leave that alone and then here i want to do custom storage layout uh, mainly so that way ubuntu doesn't create us a swap partition so we'll go here and create a kimmy hard disk drive um, use this boot device And then here, we'll do add GPT partition. We'll do uh, mount point root. Leave all that alone. We're going to use the entire disk space, so we'll go ahead and create that. And we'll hit done. And we'll hit continue. My name, I'll just put in demo. Kubernetes demo for the server name. Demo for the username and password is fine for this. And yes, we will install OpenSSH server. All right, now we have the option for selecting micro KS. We'll go ahead and select that. We don't need anything else. And we'll hit done. And then we'll wait for everything to finish installing. All 
All right, so it looks like everything's finished installing, and we will go ahead and uh, go to reboot now to reboot into our system. And then we'll hit enter to uh, continue rebooting. All right, let's go ahead and log in with our demo account. All right, so uh, since we selected micro S3 installation, it should already be installed and running. So we can do sudo micro k8s cube ctl get nodes. Okay, it's not installed. It's still installing, that's why it's not there. So I guess this is what happens with Snap, is they install after you reboot the first time. A little odd, but okay. All right, so let's try this again. There we go, not ready. So we'll give this a minute, we'll wait for it to get ready. Uh, and then we'll come back. All right, looks like it's ready now. Um, so let's go look at micro K. That's before we start jumping into Kubernetes. So let's go look at micro K. status. All right, so you can see here, so we have high availability now because we're running in, uh, we're just running a single cluster. Uh, but here we have a bunch of stuff that we could uh, potentially install. So, um, so we have traffic for using as the ingress controller. Um, we have uh, poor chainer. Uh, and we have some other stuff in here that we could be doing though. The Kubernetes dashboard, core DNS. Um, Kubeflow, Linkerd, Metalib, metric server. All right, so I don't think we're gonna enable everything, uh, but let's see. So if we do sudo micro k8s enable, um, let's enable traffic for uh, the ingress controller. We can install portainer to have a nice GUI for doing stuff. And then we also probably want DNS uh, to allow internal Kubernetes DNS. Um, Anything else? Just for this demonstration? I hope that should be fine. So let's enable all that. And this is going to go ahead and apply a bunch of uh, uh, Kubernetes configs to the cluster to enable all this stuff, as well as make some configuration changes. All right, so if we go do a status again, we should see that these are enabled. Yep. And then we can also do kubectl get nodes again, and we have ready. So let's see what's running in here now. So if we do get all, all namespaces, we should see a bunch of stuff running. Yep, we see uh, portainer running. We should see traffic. Yep, here we have traffic ingress controller running. Um, And services, traffic, ingress, service, we have 32.451. So let's try this. So the server's IP is 192.168.42.20. And then the port number was, we have uh, for traffic, 32451 
32451. All right, so we just get a 404. That's fine because we don't have any services configured in that. Uh, and we won't today. We just see that it's installed. Um, portainer, however, we can go ahead and uh, look at that. So I believe the port we want to look at is 3777. So we'll go look at that. All right, here we have Portainer. And I'll just go ahead and put in a password real quick. And then I'm going to uncheck all my statistics. Great user. All right, so in here we can go to environments. Here we see local. Um, and how do we get to the actual go to home? Here we go. So local environment, four CPUs, four gigs of RAM. We can go ahead and click into that. Now we have all this stuff here. So as you can see, we have six namespaces and we have a bunch of stuff already running. So um, from here, uh, you can go ahead and install stuff either from the command line uh, or from Partainer, and you're up and running just with a single cluster. Um, again, this is good for, say, if you're trying to run uh, a single node for development or something like that. I wouldn't really recommend MicroKate as for production usage, um, but it's there. So, I think that's it for now. Um, next week, we're going to explore setting up a full bone Kubernetes cluster. Um, and uh, one that you can actually use for production. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.